Appliances, dishwashers, washing machines, laundry machines, refrigerators. One thing holds true. Spend more money and you get more. You get more features. But how do you use them all? Oftentimes our appliances are so confusing, we don't get as much out of them as we could. To find out how to get more from your appliances, we talked to Dr. I.T. Park, Chief Technology Officer for LG, who told us how artificial intelligence is transforming your appliances. AI technology has been around for many, many decades. We're just seeing the beginning of a uh, sort of flourishing part of this because of, of the availability of computing, availability of software technologies, and availability of connectivity. So at, uh, what this means for LG is that uh, we're going to unleash uh, uh, our products full potential uh, using AI and other types of um, modern exponential technologies so that eventually what we try to do is we want to try to uh, provide the best lifestyle um, services to our customers using AI and our product portfolio. Unleashing the potential of products is a really interesting way to think about it because as even simple appliances like dishwashers and washing machines get more and more complex, I think a lot of consumers don't know how to dig into those features and find some of those. So is that the sort of thing that AI can help solve Exa for us? Exactly. Um, currently, when you use smartphone, you need to be smart to use the phone, <laughs> not the other way around, right? right. You need to learn about you know, different types of features, etc. When you're driving a modern uh, luxury car, you're probably, most people are probably using like 5% of the entire feature set of the car if you're, if you're lucky. Sure. Because it's too complex. A lot of features, that, features are there, but you have to be extremely smart and diligent to use them in the correct way. Uh, what AI will uh, hopefully will do is solve this problem of using complex systems so that um, the devices become smart and you know, really smart devices mean that it'll know exactly what you want. So can you talk a little bit about what that looks like on a more specific level? We're talking about ovens that can detect what's inside of them and yes. dishwashers that yes. automatically scale to clean the dishes the right way? Yes, so one of our key uh, strategy for our ThinQ uh, is that, um, one of the most one, important ones is, is that we want our products to evolve over time by learning about people, learning about the environment, learning about the world so that the more you use our products, uh, better our products will adapt to you, mm -hmm. not the other way around. So that's our ultimate goal. So products that evolve and get to know you based on how you use them. Yes, yeah, so you know, uh, currently when you buy a consumer electronics product, the value is highest when you before, just before you buy it. As soon as you purchase it, maybe the value goes down half, right? And then the more you use it, value goes down very quickly. I want our products to increase their value the more you use our products. You see that a lot with uh, with automobiles these days where we have over the over the top delivery of software. Yes. Tesla is especially very good at this. Yes. A new feature gets rolled out uh, and two years down the road your car has gotten smarter and faster. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the world that we might move to at some point where where new features are being rolled out and developed for a product that already exists? Yes, but e even more than that, uh, not only new features being uh, uh, downloaded over the air and then updated with new features, but the products and solutions will learn about the people. So it's not, not just the features that are added by the manufacturer, but features that you want uh, because uh, your product will be customized uh, based on your behavior and your needs. So if that's down the road, what are you doing today to get us there? Currently we have some interesting products that have uh, interesting AI features. For example, if you look at our uh, the latest OLED TV that has AI feature, you can talk to it on the remote. Uh, it's got our own AI platform built in, but also it connects to external service providers AI, for example, Google Assistant. So when you talk to it, you, say, you can say, make this a screen brighter, or uh, find NBC for me. It'll do that using our AI. Uh, but if you say, uh, what's the best restaurant nearby? It'll connect Google Assistant, it'll provide answer through that. Which makes a lot of sense. So you're leveraging the capabilities of some of your competitors rather than 
directly competing against them. It's collaboration to serve the consumer. Exactly. The world has become just too complex for any single company to insist on using their own proprietary closed solution, no matter how big the company is, how capable their R&D is. Things are changing too fast. And what we want to do is we want to provide the best uh, service that the uh, customer user wants at any time. And the only way to do that is to make sure that uh, provide the best solution from our own technology if it's available. But if we don't have it, we connect to external service uh, uh, provided by our uh, partners. So uh, we have a global R&D, uh, not only in, the no in North America, but also in various other regions uh, such as Russia, India, China, Japan, Finland, and of course Korea. Uh, and we are building up our AI capability in all of these regions. Uh, just uh, take, for example, North America. We already have uh, in Santa Clara uh, what we call Silicon Valley Lab. Applicant-specific AI uh, technology is best be done at Silicon Valley because Silicon Valley is where these things happen. Uh, we will open a, another AI lab in Toronto, uh, Canada, uh, and they will focus on a fundamental AI algorithm because Toronto is where all of these fundamental AI algorithm has been invented. That's interesting. So there's a, a very clear difference in mission between the different campuses. Yes, exactly. And you know, um, other regions also, uh, any, um, like our uh, Russia lab, for example, they're very capable in technology such as security and computer vision, so they'll focus on that. Our uh, AI function in India, they will focus on uh, software development and also testing uh, regarding AI. So each will have its own uh, specific mission. Uh, you mentioned gestures before as a different way of interacting with things. I think we've seen that to some extent with phones, yes. but is that going to spread out to other appliances as well? Appliances and also in the, in the car as well. Uh, for example, in the car, because of safety, you need to keep your eyes on the road, uh, hands on the wheel. And the best way to interact with a car, if the technology is really mature, is a multimodal interface with a car. Not just voice, not just a gesture, but a combination of those. Makes sense. Um, you mentioned fun, and I remember at CES there was a, a, a great display of robotics at the LG booth, which to me is a lot of fun. Um, how does robotics play into the whole AI landscape? Um, that's a very, very uh, uh, good question for us because we are aggressively, aggressively moving into robot business. Uh, we are making robots at home. For example, if you buy the latest, our latest robot vacuum cleaner, uh, it's got, it comes with many different sensors, cameras, it navigates aut autonomously, and it learns the environment while it cleans, so it becomes uh, more and more efficient. You can talk to it, and you know, it can do, hopefully we'll add more uh, fun features to this robot, so that it's not just a cleaning robot, but also almost acts, like, acts as a uh, um, pet or a companion. And then we have commercial uh, robots. Uh, if you come to Korea next time, you'll run into, most likely you'll run into our service robots at the Incheon Airport. After about a year of um, trial service at Incheon Airport, we are officially launching this as a you know, official service in a couple of weeks, mid-August. Uh, our uh, robots can speak four languages, comes with a big display, you can interact with it. You can, you can talk to it, it talks back to you. You can uh, interact with it with touch screen, you can scan your ticket. You can ask it for a uh, Burger King menu or even you ask it where the Burger King is and it will escort you to that location. And we talked a little bit about how you collaborate with some of the bigger brands that exist, um, Google for example or, or Amazon. Mm -hmm. But to what extent do you guys work in collaboration with some of the smaller startups? We see a, a whole host of companies and people with great ideas these days. Yes. Do you foster that and nurture that? How do you, how do you interact with that community? I think it's, it is extremely important to work with uh, small startup companies because they bring in uh, very unique innovations that we currently don't have. Uh, I like to think of these startups from Silicon Valley or Israel 
uh, or even Korea or other, other regions in the world to be an extension of our R&D. Uh, so sometimes we work with them together in a joint project, sometimes we invest in them, sometimes we acquire them. Uh, if we think that certain technology is critical for our success. Um, it's a learning process for LG because we are, this is quite new uh, in doing open innovation, but I think one, it's one of our key components for success in the future. I think one of the challenges that modern technology companies like yours face is the issue of privacy. How much information do I share with a company like LG, how much does LG share outside? What do you guys know about me? Yeah. And especially as you're talking about uh, ordinary appliances that learn to adapt yes. and work with people, they get to know not just who I am, but what I'm like, when I'm home, what am I doing at my house? How do you mitigate privacy concerns with, with the need to develop a product like that? Yes, with devices being connected, um, we can prov and also with software capability, we can provide a lot more features uh, with our products and solutions than we could before, and also AI is one of them. Downside of that is uh, there's a big risk in security and privacy, and we take those two very seriously. For security, uh, we, ha we are uh, always trying to develop and developing the latest uh, security technologies to be built into our products so that uh, we are always um, secure with the latest technologies, including over-the-air, secure over-the-air update. If something goes wrong, we need to update the product ASAP. Privacy is also very, very important. Uh, our policy is that we do not uh, collect uh, user-specific uh, data. We collect, uh, we uh, observe uh, user-specific behavior so that we can en enhance our products. But also, we try to do, uh, go one step further by making sure that our default setting in all of our products, all of these data collection uh, type of features are disabled. So people need to opt in. So for example, if you use our LG OLED TV that comes with WebOS, everything is default off. You need to opt in not the other way around. I think uh, there are too many features that are being uh, provided to people and automatically they don't do anything when they purchase a product. So if you purchase a product that has everything uh, automatically opted in and you need to opt out specifically, I think that's a mistake.